It is 17 minutes past 11. BBC Radio Oxford. It's Friday and you know what that means. There were a load of brand new movies out today. So this is where we task our movie critic Van Connor to go out, see as many as he possibly can. And then he reports back to us with two that you could choose to go and see this weekend. Uh, Now, one, I believe, is streaming this weekend and one is in the cinema. Welcome back to the show, Van Connor. How are you? Oh, pleasure, Mr. Ball. All good here. How are you doing this morning? Yes, lovely, ready for the weekend, this end. Um, now, talking to movies, I just mentioned then, one of them is available on streaming uh, right now, isn't it? Yeah, Vacation Friends 2, that is on Disney+. Plus, uh, and our other film, what are we going to talk about first? Uh, Cobweb is in cinemas from today. Okay, Cobweb. So, um, I'm guessing this is a horror with a title like that. It, it indeed is. Yeah, Cobweb doesn't exactly lend itself to a rom-com, that title, <laughs> does it? No. Um, so Cobweb, I think, a feature debut, I think, for Samuel Bowden, uh, stars Anthony Starr, Lizzie Kathleen, and Cleopatra Coleman. And it is uh, it's the story of a young boy who's played, eight-year-old boy, played by Woody Norman, who's apparently turning up in... Uh, in uh, Last Voyage of the Demeter this next month, the Dracula on a Boat movie. Really looking forward to that. Uh, but he's a young boy who hears uh, a voice from the other side of his bedroom wall one night pleading with him for help and, like, scratching and knocking on the wall. And uh, he starts to, you know, lash out. He starts to do drawings of his terror. And his school teacher starts to bring them home. And it starts to open up the mystery of just what's going on in his home and what are his parents really up to. I've got a clip for you. Have a listen. This is, the, this is after the drawing. What? kind of picture, Carol? A child. A child asking for help. What? I knew that you would jump to conclusions. You're telling me this now? Uh, that's just not possible. Stop, stop, stop. I tell you about just Stop. stop. Peter, why would you draw a picture like that? Peter! I really hurt her! No, you did not! No! You're grounded. Okay, Peter, go to your room. No, 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 Carol, he's grounded. He's going in the basement. Oh, it's about time we got a really good horror movie. Please tell me this was a good one with loads of jumpy bits in it. Yeah, I really like this. It's really creepy. It's got great atmosphere. It's nothing revelatory. It's not like change the game or anything, but it's the most fun I've had with a mainstream horror flick since Barbarian last Halloween. So I think they've released this too early. It should have been out next month. You know, they should have put this out in October. But uh, but this is a really great one. I really enjoyed this. The only thing I'd say against it, the only black mark I can possibly put against it, is uh, Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr as the kids' parents. The typecasting of the pair of them, respectively, kind of gets in the way of a bit of the suspense of the movie. Like, it kind of tips its hand in certain directions, like just the fact that it's those two actors and things are accused of, etc. It's uh, it's maddening, but it's otherwise a really fun, really enjoyable horror flick. Who's the uh, the young kid in it? Is he a rising star, do you think, or has he been in m- many other things? Well, but he's done, I think, TV spots. As I say, Woody Norman is his name, and he's in The Last Voyage of the Demeter, which is uh, the new Dracula on a boat movie. It's the, the ship that brings Dracula to England, and he apparently gets loose on the boat and goes after the crew. He's apparently on that boat in the movie. I remember seeing him in the trailer, actually. So I've got that to look forward to, but I think he's mostly a TV, uh, mostly had TV guest spots before now. Wow, interesting one to go and see if you fancy it. Cobweb, which is out in cinemas from today. And if you just want to sit on the sofa over the weekend, don't want to leave the house because the weather isn't great, you can stream this from your very own living room. Vacation Friends 2. Of course, we had Vacation Friends 1, what, about 18 months ago, two years ago? It's 2021, it's dated as. Yeah, I think it's it's about two years ago, I think. So, um... First of all, do you need to have seen the first Vacation Friends to understand and and, and get into Vacation Friends 2? Not really. It's a pretty basic premise. It's kind of like Daddy's Home. It's like, okay, we get it. There's like different stepdads. Okay, cool. There's the dad and the stepdad and they're different people. We get it. Same kind of thing here. This is where you've got two couples who've met on vacation in the first movie. Uh, Lil Rel Howery and Yvonne Orgy are, uh, are, are the central couple, the POV couple. They're relatively straight-laced and they cross paths with John Cena and Meredith Hagner as uh, Ron and Kayla. And they are the sort of wild child couple, but, you know, middle-aged. And that's the central premise of the first movie. And you've kind of got the same thing here where they go on a different vacation. And uh, this coincides with Laurel's character having to impress some corporate uh, hotel chain owners whose resort they're staying at so that he can get a big project. And he has to put up with the embarrassment of his friends. And into this mix also, however, comes Kayla's dad, who's our new character in this, who's played by Steve Buscemi. 
just been released from prison and may or may not be up to something shady. But I'll, I've got a clip for you of his introduction, so we'll let you determine if he sounds a bit dodge. I can't believe I'm actually here. Uh, yeah, you know, neither can we. Yeah, man, it's crazy that, 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 you, that you're here. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, why are you, why are you here? Guys, this is it's a crazy. He was literally just released from St. Quentin. Just yesterday. Perfect timing, right? So wait, Kylie, you told him to come here? No. I mean, all I told him was like the hotel we were staying at and then classic my dad completely surprised us. Look, I have missed all the big events in Kyla's life. You know, the birth of her kid, the wedding, graduation from cool sculpting school. That one hurt. And her mom's death. May Jesus rest her beautiful, precious, lovely soul. God, I hated that witch. So after all that, I had no choice. I had to come crash her honeymoon. Right? <laughs> oh, we are so glad you did. I mean, if I'm honest with you, when I see the title Vacation Friends 2, it, mm. to me it just kind of screams a little bit of a, a boring rom-com type movie. That's kind of what comes to mind. But you're, you're saying it's not quite like that. It's not quite like that. And the movie you're thinking of is Couples Retreat. Oh, was exactly no. the movie you're yes. describing. That's yes. the exact movie you're describing. It was Couples Retreat. Yeah, with Vince Vaughn and John Favreau. Oh, God, that sucked. Yeah. Anyway, no... Um, this is about as good as the first movie, to be fair. And it's a bit more of a sort of wacky hijinks movie. There are, you know, there's action set pieces and things like that. There's a lot of, it's, to be honest, it's nice seeing studio comedy, even if it is on streaming. Because it's like people were quite taken with the Jennifer Lawrence one recently, No Hard Feelings. And, and that was a kind of a rallying moment for, oh, look, a, a studio comedy is actually doing business on the screen. But it was just nice to see one attempted because it doesn't happen very often anymore. And this has that kind of a feeling, even if it is a bit more Adam, Adam Sandler-fied. Having said that, the cast are all quite fun. I particularly like John Cena and uh, Meredith Hagner. They're, yeah. they're, they're you know, a barrel of firecrackers together. Um, but And Steve Buscemi. Who doesn't love Steve Buscemi? You know, going full... Um, oh, God, who's his uh, his villain from... Uh, Con Randall. Randall from uh, Monsters, Inc. Oh. Think of Randall from Monsters, Inc. Some of that... Monsters Inc. sleaze. Give us some of that Randall Box, uh, Randall Box sleaze in there. And he's good fun. I really like him in it. It's not a brilliant movie. You're not going to change the change the game or anything. It's a three star at best kind of a thing. But it's exactly on par with the first movie. And if you happen to be a big fan of the first movie, look no further. They've gone from Weekend at Bernie's to Weekend at Bernie's two. There's only about a three or four percent drop in quality. You're good. Sounds like a perfect Saturday, rainy Saturday afternoon yeah. on the sofa. Stream it from Disney Plus. Yeah. Let it wash over you. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's, it's got John Cena drinking a lot and partying. When is that not fun? <laughs> well, if you want to watch it, Vacation Friends 2 is available from today on Disney Plus. So you can stream it at home. Um, Van, you are back next week. What have we got to talk about on the show next week that you're going to get to watch before us? Next week, it's the action sequel we've all been waiting for. It's The Nun 2, None Harder. I'm kidding, it's, it's just The Nun 2. Uh, that's the biggie uh, for next week. I'm really looking forward to that. We've also got a documentary about this absolutely insane-sounding documentary called Man on Fire that, uh, uh, yeah, that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. But uh, that's about this this, fi this de deviant financial criminal with uh, liter literal ties to the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. This sounds so great. So this one's going to get nuts. Yeah, yeah, this does sound absolutely brilliant. I'm looking forward to that one next week. All right, well, we shall discuss those on Friday, same time next week. In the meantime, have a lovely weekend, Van, and thank you for coming on. Till the next time, good sir. <laughs>